Hey guys, Ray from Levy RV and Boat. So today I'm going to be installing a new offering from Halo View. They're a maker of uh, rear view camera systems for your RV or truck, big truck, tractor trailers, that sort of thing. And I've installed and reviewed quite a few of their models over the years. Um, actually, this is the BT7 model and it's a touchscreen. And I did review it this past uh, winter when we were down south. And uh, it's basically the same model, except now this one includes a tire pressure monitoring system. So they uh, contacted me and asked me if I would be willing to install and review this model for them. So I accepted the offer and disclaimer was sent out to me, <clears throat> no charge. Uh, let's just go through their features here. So it's got the tire pressure monitoring up to 32 tires. It's the touchscreen model. Full HD, it actually records in full HD, IP69K for the waterproofing of the cameras. I think it does up to four cameras. This kit just has the one rear view camera. That's all I usually need. Um, some people like to have the side cameras, that sort of thing. Uh, looks like it has a night vision and they have digital video recording. So it'll record whatever's happening. And then if you need to play back, later which i like to do because i use it for my video footage but if you ever had an accident or something you would have a recording of what went on anyway this is an interesting kit so i'm going to take it apart show you what's in it and then we're going to install it on my uh, fifth wheel trailer and we'll do a go through all the settings for you and we'll do a quick test give you a look at uh, out, out the rear camera system and and what the tire pressure monitoring things do That'll be the first video. Then I'll actually use it for, say, a month or so while we make our way down south this year. And I'll come back and let you know how it's performed. So let's get this thing apart. Everything is nicely organized in styrofoam here. So they do pack things very well, I found. And they also seem to include everything you need. You know, there's really not too many things you need other than, than what's included to set everything up. And decent owner's manual. Wow. Lots of stuff. Let's just slowly go through this for you. Um, we'll start with the tire pressure monitoring stuff. I see they've included two signal boosters and a quick glance through the manual says you try it with one booster. If that's good, you're good to go. But they did include a second booster because they don't know exactly how long a vehicle you're going to be putting this on, whether it's an RV, big bus or or a fifth wheel trailer. On my trailer, I have a signal booster just underneath the front storage compartment. It's worked very well there with my previous system. So I think I'll try that first. It says on the trailers, try that at that point. And if that's not enough, you can mount this down up back by the axles. And uh, the kit comes with six on this one. Six, uh, I guess it's sort of set up for a, an RV that's a dually RV. Kind of like your Class C RV that has dual rear wheels, so they would have six tires. But uh, I told them I'm running my truck and trailer, and I kind of like to have them on my truck as well. So they included two more for me, so I'll have eight for all eight tires. I'll give you a quick look at the sensor here. It goes on the wheel, attaches to the, the valve. Looks pretty good. A little bit of heft to it, actually. And it looks like it may be either nickel plated or stainless steel and brass. So should be good to handle the elements. I'll show you it apart. And then they take a, a little button battery, like a watch battery. Here's mounting for the display. Here's the, the touchscreen display. And uh, I kind of like how they've rounded the corners. That was a, a new feature with their, with their recent displays. And it's a lot smaller. You don't have the extra buttons on the side or on the top or bottom. So it kind of makes a very compact display. I think it's a 7-inch display. And they give you a couple mounting options here. There's a suction cup, so you can put that against on the windshield somewhere. Or there's also a, a 3M sticky pad there you could mount it to your dash um, i prefer to have it on my rear view uh, mirror so i do have from a previous model they they sell a uh, a rear rear view mirror mount you can have elastic bands or i have actually put uh, 
on mine. I have a very big RAM mirror. So I attach it to the back there and then I use uh, Velcro straps to hold it in place. Comes with a couple antennas that go on the top there. And then for power, it can just go to a 12 volt power socket or you can has a type C input so you can actually power it off USB, I believe. And then they give you this wire to help you with pairing. Uh, usually the camera comes paired with the display, but if it isn't, you can plug both of them in close together and do the pairing so that they, they know each other and can work. Um, as far as the camera goes, it's your basic camera. It has LED, actually has an LED floodlight. And also for like for night vision, you can turn on a floodlight, give you a little better uh, lighting up the area behind as you pull into a, a campsite at night. And then it also has a uh, antenna there. Where's... There we go. So that I mount up high on the back end of my RV. I'll show you that. Maybe some screws for mounting, mounting gasket. Also, they include a different uh, mount. I believe there's a, some trailers come equipped with a Furion system. And they also include the wire to hook to that pre-installed a jack that's on a lot of campers now so that you can just plug it in straight and already will have the the power output at the pre-installed point if not this wire gets uh, put in and you find uh, 12 volts uh, a lot of people use the back running lights i actually have uh, built myself a, a 12 volt uh, junction box for i use it also to run wiring for my uh cell booster so it's already up there makes it easy for me to connect what else we got oh great batteries yay so you got batteries for the the sensors there it looks like it's cr 1632 and then a little pack of goodies we've got some uh, zip ties and there's uh gaskets o-rings in there for i guess they're spare o-rings for the, the pressure monitors as well and some nuts for putting them on your tires there. I guess backing nuts to tighten it up. And a little tool for that. And I guess this is some stuff for mounting screens, cleaning things up. If you're going to do some uh, mounting on the windshield or somewhere. Anyway, quite a thorough packaging of stuff there. So we'll get to work. I'll, first I'll start. I'll install the, the rear camera. And then we'll build a test this inside here. I'll plug it into a, a USB and we'll fire it up and make sure the picture is working on that. And then we can go to start installing these on my uh, trailer and truck and test that out. So there's where my camera gets mounted, right at the center near the top. You want it to be up near the roof line so that you can have a uh, good uh, signal, wireless signal uh, strength. So this will go in here just to seal it from weather. And this will get screwed in down there. Now, like I said, I have my own power system run. See this junction box, it's been there for a while. It was installed for my uh, cell uh, booster antenna so i utilize it to run 12 volts out of there that goes down below to a switch that i installed near my uh, control panel in my rig so i just gonna attach that i'll probably solder those wires and put some shrink tubing on because i'm constantly kind of been changing these as i test these units so that's the way i do it anyway most people will utilize a running light like right down here you could pull this off the rig and behind there would be the 12 volts for the light so that when you turn on your running lights your camera would come on and then they just run it up and into the into the camera another option is the halo view does sell a, a battery pack that you can charge and mount with like a, a magnet mount and then i think it runs a few days to power a camera between uh, recharging times 
I utilize that on my boat actually to monitor the stuffing box on my boat. So let's install this and then we'll be able to uh, sync the camera and give you a look with the display. There we go, got her installed. So I'll take some uh, sealant and cover up those screws and where the cord goes into the camera casing. I also like to put some electrical tape on the antenna there where it goes in just to keep it from uh, maybe coming loose. But we should be ready to go now. Give you a closer look at the display. On this side we have a power button and then you can see USB-C, which I've got a plug in there, and then the DC slot for the cigarette type lighter power socket. And on the other side, we have a slot for your micro SD card, and there's a power light, and then there's a button for pairing cameras, and then there's the two uh, antenna. So we'll just plug that in. There we go. And you can see the image out the back of the camper. So I have up here, I have the wire coming down through the roof and across. And like I say, I have it into a, my control panel here. I was able to wire in a 12 volt socket and I plug that in. I even put a little switch on there so I can switch it on and off. It's wired into the camper battery system. So when I go to a tow, I can turn that on or I can also just have it on and use it as a, a security system with the in the RV park or campground because this actually is recording you can see it up there so nice bright display and touch screen so I'm interested in next the tire pressure monitoring system looks like that's a setup screen okay so I've got to learn different sensors you can place different sensors around here. Okay, so I had a glance through the manual and I think I get the gist of it now. You can see it can handle quite a few tires. This is all the tires it can handle on the on like a RV or the tow vehicle. And then these are the trailer three axles and then even spare tires. Uh, two ways to set it up. You can go auto learn. So you click Auto Learn and you screw it into the tire and it, within 15 seconds it's supposed to automatically sync up. Or you can do Manual ID. So I guess on the top of these there's a number that you can push in there and uh, set it up that way. Enter the, the thing using this keypad here and the Enter thing. Also for adjusting your alerts you can go in and set your high temp or your uh, high pressure and low pressure when you want to be alerted if it gets too high or too low or it gets too hot. I really like the one, the high temp, because if, if any problem happens with the tire, you know, it starts to, the brake starts to drag, especially on the trailer, or the bearings start to fail. I have aluminum uh, wheels on there and the temperature from the hub will transfer through the wheel and into the, into the sensor I actually have, um, metal valve stems so the temperature transfers quite well so I can kind of keep an eye on the temperature and, and hopefully pull over before I get a bearing failure or anything like that. So Anne's got the truck right now so I'm just going to put the four trailer tires on and we'll see what it looks like. Do a quick test here. You can see you can plug a uh, the USB-C into a portable pack. I'm just using a Milwaukee light there and that can make it easier when you're doing the learn function. Anyway, let's try uh, taking this off. 
like we're losing air. So there we go, fast leak. Low pressure, fast leak warning. So you can see it's showing 66 PSI, 50 degrees, pretty close on all the tires there. And that's set to Fahrenheit. You can change this to Celsius if you prefer. So wait till Ann gets back with the truck and then we'll put the truck ones on. Maybe I'll do the learn function there. So I'll show you where I'm gonna install my repeater, extender, wireless extender. So this is the one for the GUTA wireless system I have for the tire pressure monitoring. I just have it screwed down there. And then it goes inside my front compartment where my batteries are and stuff. And I actually run it along and up into a solar charge controller that has a load output. So it's able to, to use battery or solar and provide the power for the extender. So I'm just going to do that as well. Um, lots of people might want to just clip it to battery terminals, but you might want to install some type of fusing. I don't see a fuse. This is just a connector. So the wire is actually not fused. On mine here I installed a small fuse just in case. But you have to work out that for yourself depending where you do the installation. Anyway, I'm going to just cut off these alligator clips so that I can install it right here, my load terminals. Right in there. Okay, so that's connected to the load terminals, comes down underneath my carpet here, and then I've mounted in the same spot I had the previous one. And we got a green light for power and every once in a while I see a blue light flash and it says signal there and just dress the leads along there they do give you this plug that you can undo to help run the wiring I guess if you have to run it through a small hole I do notice it takes a little bit for them to sync up you can see these ones still say zero zero same thing with, happened with my previous uh, tire pressure monitors. I guess they take a while to sync back and forth. Okay, I got the truck back, so we're going to try the auto learn on the truck tire here. Put it on over there. So first we got to do is select which tire we want it to be there. Then you click auto learn and you got within 15 seconds you want to screw it on there. There we go. So you can see it auto learned the ID and right away we have our pressure and temperature. So we've got all eight of them set up now. And also you can turn the trailer on and off. So when you're disconnected, you can get rid of the trailer tires and just have the truck tires. And then you can have actually three different trailers set up for this. There we are. Also, they give you this little tool and you can put a nut on behind the sensor and then just tighten it up. And that's sort of a anti-theft thing. People can't just come along and twist it off easily. So I could include the mounts they included. I could uh, use the suction cup on the windshield or the 3M on my dash, but they kind of get in the way. And there is some places, states that don't allow you to have very much on your windshield. Um, I do have this little tire pressure monitor but I won't even need that anymore. So what I do is I mirror mount it because I have a trailer so it's gonna, the trailer is going to be behind me blocking it anyway. Um, now Halevue does sell some mirror mounts that you can screw on the back. Um, I think the ones they currently have have kind of um, rubber bands that fit around 
but the mirror in my Ram truck is fairly thick and I found the rubber bands so it was really hard to get on and off so I actually used some velcro straps and then I just take it and strap it on the mirror I'll show you in a second here another mod I made was to add this 90 degree connector and that just reduces the space needed above the display by the antenna so that I can have it on my mirror and it's not it can fit up against my headrest now they say having these at this angle is not as good as signal strength wise straight up and down is better but I don't really have a lot of alternative unless I mounted it upside down and had them hanging down but anyway I used it like that previously and I had no problem with any signal dropouts or anything so I'm going to do that again there we go so the thing is all installed on the mirror and you can see how those tuck up quite nicely now and it's actually on there pretty tight it stays put I'll give you a look how the it looks now so it's quite out of the way and then I can just glance up there and see what's going on behind the trailer just like I was looking in the rearview mirror Okay, so there we are mounted. You can see the view behind the camper. I just put my ladder in a bucket and a broom so you can kind of see the resolution there. It's very good, very sharp and clear. Uh, just go through all the settings here for you. Along the top, it's hard to see, but there's a signal meter here showing uh, four bars, three to four bars, which is good. Even though the antennas are mounted that way, it seems to have enough signal strength. And I'm actually about eight feet in front of the camper I'm not even hooked up right now um, here we have the recording that red dot there says recording and it records over the card so when it gets to the end of the card it, it records over what was recorded before I find I can get many days out of it it says very very well compressed recordings I think I can go a week or ten days of recordings before they start to overwrite uh, so it's a touch screen so to bring up any menus you just have to touch the screen this brings up your different cameras so if I go to Q mode there you can see I don't have any other cameras and you can change the audio here if you had multiple cameras you could check the audio they do have microphones on them and then you just click to uh, get out of that and then right here this will get you into the the menus here we have volume, so you can have the, the volume. There's a speaker in here, and it uh, can give you a volume of what's going on behind. I'll go back there and, uh, and talk to it so you can see in a minute. And there's a mute. I usually leave it muted just because it's annoying to hear all the, the traffic noises or anything. Sometimes when I'm backing in, I might turn it on so that I can hear Anne giving me directions. Um, pairing. If, I didn't need to pair it came prepared but if you're doing pairing you would click that and then you would go and press a button on the camera within I think 30 seconds or so and it will, uh, will pair a new camera uh, picture controls you got brightness contrast color and then cam LED there's a small LED that that shows up on the camera if you turn that on just so I guess so you know it has power uh, mirror mode so right now you know it depends on on if you're using it as a rear view camera like me you don't want it showing on this side you actually want it to show on the other side because that is where that bucket is it's when I'm looking forward as a rear view mirror so that allows you to do that and then up and down allows you to mount the camera upside down if you wanted to there's your Q mode I have it just in quad mode but there's all kinds of different uh, ways you can have it display the pictures depending on how many cameras you have and such um, setting here we have cam trigger so the, the cameras can be used for turn signals and things like that so they have a green wire on them and you can hook that up to a, a turn signal bulb and then when you do the turn signal it automatically switches to the camera a little more involved settings there but that is there uh, this is just different uh, country codes we use the uh, NT CS here in Canada and the US auto dim so at night this will get less bright seems to have a pretty quick uh, on screen display go to sleep so screen off you can have the screen completely off as well it, I don't want it to turn off because I'm using it as a rear view mirror so I have it set to zero otherwise you could have it go off in a certain amount of seconds 
scan you could have it scan through multiple cameras park line that gives you you know your your park lines in there and you can adjust that i don't i don't you don't need that for trailers and most rvs but some smaller rvs it might be useful and then record so i have recording on format the card cover means record over and then there's the time you can set the time because they put a time stamp on the recordings and playback so you can go in here and uh, go see what's been recorded uh, there we go pick one here and it'll play back a recording basically right in here or you can pull the card out and uh, put it in your your computer and copy it over and, and play back in your computer Sort of hear some sound as a car uh, RV's going by, by right now. Okay, if you touch it twice, once, twice, that gets you into this quick menu, so you can turn your uh, your uh, your um, park things on and off. You can mute the volume quickly. Um, you can change your brightness levels. So that's quite. It's very bright display. That's one thing I like about it because you know if you're on a sunny day. Um, it can be hard to see your display, so it has quite the range. I really improved the displays on this model. Then this is a, a floodlight, so at the back of the camper there's some LEDs that turn super bright and it gives you a, a floodlight going out the back to help you see at night. I think that's the record. Yeah, you can see the recording changes up there. And then the big feature on this one, tire pressure monitor. So you can see I have my truck showing here, up there, all the the pressures, all my tires, and all the temperatures of all my tires. And then you can click down there and you can set all the different high pressure and low pressure like I showed you before. And that's how you can manually add them or auto learn them and set your high temp thing. So you can custom make that. I think when they auto learn, they kind of automatically see the pressure and they'll they'll change that automatically to the the best pressure but i like to go in and manually set each my tire anyway i'll just go back there and say a few words we'll see uh, what it sounds like we'll hear what, what it sounds like behind the camper okay good 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 keep backing keep backing stop stop you're gonna run me over There we go. That's about it, really. The only thing I don't know is if we can get any tire pressure monitoring on the screen. I know the alerts will pop up, so I'll just go and take one of the, the pressure um, system monitors off. Well, that's the front driver's side I took off so this pops up and alerts you press that and it's telling me zero pressure low pressure fast leak let's put it back on okay that seemed to work okay but like I say the only thing I don't see is if you can have it displayed so i have this while i'm towing as my rear view monitor it would be nice if maybe somehow i could have on the screen the tire temperatures maybe along the bottom but uh, i don't see any way to do that i'll ask them though and see if it is possible but I'd, i read through the instructions and i don't see any way to do that okay so there's the installation and setup and a kind of a walkthrough of all the settings and features of this uh Bite Tango 7 Halo View rear monitor system with the tire pressure monitoring system included. So I'll give it a few weeks, at least maybe two or three weeks of use. We're just about to, to leave this campground I'm in and we're going to travel a couple hundred, maybe two, three hundred miles at least in the next few weeks. And uh, I'll come back and give you some footage of that and let you know how it performed, let you know if the wireless signals fell out or anything happened to the 
the new sensors and just how it worked. Um, I'll just finish this video with some footage from, I don't have any footage from this new system, but I did have the Byte Tango 7 previously, so I'll let you have some foot, actual real life footage of in, a, in action and shows what, what goes on behind the rig. Till next time, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. Cheers, guys.